So no one told you life was going to be this way, it's VGC, a video game podcast with me, Jordan Midler, Aaron Bain and Pete Donaldson. This week we've got layoffs at Bungie, the new PS5 is in the wild and we know a tiny bit more about Marvel's Wolverine. But first, Aaron, how you doing? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. I just uh, finished Spider-Man 2 last night, oh, three trophies good. away from yeah. the from the Platinum, I'm getting there. This is, what are the trophies you've got left? Uh, one of them's to visit... Uh, Aunt May's uh, grave. Grave. God rest her. There's another one that I probably messed up about doing symbiote powers within a certain amount of time, mm-hmm. uh, and then the other one's spider bots, I think. So I'm like, oh, yeah. if you if you want to find out where all the spider bots are, we've got a great guide on VGC. If you want oh, to go and so check them out, every uh, every they... neighbourhood covered. <laughs> I, I've not played a lot of sp- the new Spider-Man game, but I imagine visiting a grave is the easiest of those. I thought <laughs> that one sounds a lot easier. I thought I would leave that one to last. You know, right? Okay, make okay. it easy for myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, Pete, how are you doing? I'm good, yeah, all good. Uh, d- uh, dog may go crazy at any moment because uh, he's in the room with me, but I've given him a big juicy bone, like a proper comedy yeah. 1980s bone that's the size of my head, and he's he's very into it's that. A happy moment, boy. So. You might as well, he's a happy you boy. You might as well just put a pie on the windowsill and let him float over there on the <laughs> on the nostril cloud. On the smell, yeah. And uh-huh. um, this morning when uh, Plumbergate continued and the third plumber turned up, um, <laughs> both of plumber. the dogs went absolutely batshit. And then once the plumber mm. was away, uh, the larger dog Ren had to go into every room and bark once just to make sure that that was at the house. Yeah, the the house was clear. Yeah. Doing a security Free patrol. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although nice. if she actually got <laughs> if she actually got in, anywhere near the the plumber, she would just like cut into him and get a bit of a clap. Like uh. not not a not a vengeful bone in her body. Um, <laughs> the other one's an XL bully, unfortunately. Um, before we get started <laughs> this week, uh, quick plug: we are giving away two copies of. A handheld history, I think. A handheld history, a history of hands. <laughs> I'm just filling while Jordan grabs the book. If you're a video uh, watcher, as opposed to an audio listener, you can see in my hand yeah. I have a copy of A Handheld History by the folks at Lost in Cult. Um, they sent two of them over, and they're going to listeners of this very podcast. If you want to know how Jordan, to win. Are you, are, you posting, are you posting these yourself? I'm, I'm, I'm posting these. Jordan, that's, that's <laughs> going above and beyond. I'm... I do it for the listeners, for the people. I did, it, I did it for the, the rock. Um, he's, he's tearing up. Um, UK only, because I'm not sending these to you. UK Europe. only, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you will find out later in the podcast how to win a handheld history. Let's get mm. started with story number one. Spider-Man 2 creative director confirms Wolverine exists in the same universe. Brian Antahar was speaking on Kind of Funny Games, friends of the show, and said, quote, they're all... 1048 when asked by host Greg Miller if the upcoming Wolverine game and current Spider-Man titles exist in the same version of the Marvel Universe. 1048 refers to this revision of the Marvel Universe. Um, people not au fait with Marvel. Uh, th- this is the reason why there can be five Peter Parker comics happening at the right. same time because they're all okay. different universes. He's, he's, he's Universe 2 and he's Universe 1048. This is them basically saying that this Wolverine game the Spider-Man game exist together. Aaron, does that does that one does it surprise you too? Does it tickle your fancy? Because that's got a mixed reaction on X. I don't give a shit to be honest. It's 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 kind of expected, but like surely the two games are completely unconnected, other than the fact that they support. Like I'm expecting one little thing in a side mission where you hear like, oh, the the web swinging guy from New York. That's mm. going to be it. Like, because yeah. surely Wolverine's mm. not going to go anywhere near New York, is he? Is he? I, I, I don't mean, feel like I know enough about Wolverine outside of the movies to, to really... Where's it set? Paris? I don't know where. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing, like, the, the, the clip from it, it was in some kind of dive bar kind of place, so... Uh... But the, the whole point of Wolverine is they, they have built-in story reasons why he can be, like, the eternal, essentially. He can go through all these different time periods, so mm. I think it is just them getting their ducks in a row so that they don't have all these different disparate references going on at the same time because as you mentioned mm. pre-podcast Aaron you've finished Spider-Man 2 now uh-huh. without saying anything they're very much getting to the point where they're they're expanding into the larger kind of universe around us so I, mm-hmm. I think it's just it's, it's admin more than anything Pete are, I mean, you, are you sick of uh, multiverses are you or do you just want us to stay in one universe one universe means one universe 
Yeah, I just think it's all very convenient when it comes to exposition where you sort of go, oh, it's something different. Yeah. This is actually something different. Yeah. It's like, you no, you just didn't take the Polaroid to make sure that the costumes are the same in the, in the different places. <laughs> I think it would be more interesting if they said that it shared the Ali McBeal universe. Yeah. You know, like, it, 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 none of this is a surprise. As a non-Marvel watcher, like, I don't know what all of this is. I don't know what a shared universe is. I watched this the, the, the cartoon <laughs> Spider-Verse thing, and that was very good. But um, my interest in how the fabric uh, of, of the stories kind of intertwine is, uh, is, is very limited, unfortunately. But uh, uh, good, good on them for settling everyone down <laughs> or exciting them. Yeah. Delete as appropriate. <laughs> it feels like a question that they knew they were going to get asked by nerds, so yeah. they just had to make a decision one way or the other. Um, I don't think <laughs> yeah. it'll have... It's, oh, fuck it. Yeah, yeah they're like, fine, just put it in the same it, one. Yeah. We, can, we can always split it whenever we want. Like, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Yeah. Nothing matters. Um, it's lazy. They were also asked why uh, Marvel's Spider-Man Two doesn't feature any Wolverine references. Um, although that that isn't technically true. There is one, but it's not. It's not really right. a reference. It's more of a. Uh, in fact, I won't say it. There was a de- <laughs> quote. There was a decision not to do it. I think for us, we wanted to right. let the team cook, and who knows what the future holds. But right now, let them do their thing, which I think is fair enough in terms of not kind of shoehorning them into any expectations about what this wolverine is going to be um aiden the only thing i care about is that this wolverine game is an 18 and it's a bloody mess it has to be like if if it isn't i'm going to be really really disappointed because that is the one thing that i'm like really looking forward to is the insomniac formula that i get to slash people to bits i want to see limbs going you know it's the same thing with like Mm. why the star wars games of a slight bit of like it's a little bit disappointing because i want to decapitate a stormtrooper yeah. let me do something mm. like that in wolverine so you don't want it to just be that like charred edge around yeah what's the reasoning gonna be there yeah that's <laughs> disney brand bible stuff um I, I, I like it they're like wolverine's claws are so warm that when he slices people it actually cauterizes the wounds <laughs> instantly. Wound, yeah. Speed. Yeah. yeah it slices through <laughs> the blood cells yeah <laughs> <laughs> they, they either do that or they do the people you're fighting aren't humans they're like yeah that's that's the go-to green, cop green out blooded people yeah mm-hmm. um, I, so. surely surely you've got to go for it with this one because yeah. like wolverine naturally is a bit more of a like hardcore character in terms uh-huh. of like the violence although they've got away with it with the movies but everyone's well most people's favorite when you talk about that character on their own it's part of why they liked Logan so much because it was violence that met the level of the character, whereas yeah, like you're just PG thirteen in it. If that's I think, a phrase. <laughs> I think Insomniac have probably oh, Insomniac obviously want to do it. The last conversation I had about this game was it was very much we want to do it while Disney let us. Um, and I feel like after Spider Man two, they can be like, come on, it's like Aye. the fastest selling PlayStation Studios game ever. Give us a chance to do it. Um. It would we'll sell. See. It would still sell. Oh yeah, it would do, bro. Like, like people, people. It's different. Care. It's different to the movie, the, the movie side of things, though, isn't it? Like eighteen, you know, really violent video games do sell, yeah. and it doesn't. It, you know, and also people just buy um, really violent video games for their kids anyway, and they don't really care about yeah. uh, uh, what, what it actually says on the box. There's no boxes anymore. Yeah. Where are you going to see the? Where are you going to see the eighteen? And you don't. There's no. There's no stories to. There's no Daily Mail stories anymore about violent video no. games. Like the new Call of Duty have you line up like 10 children and shoot them in the head mm-hmm. and they would get like a footnote on the daily mail website whereas back in the days i know russian it was like everything ev- everything yeah. in the media landscape was turned towards when call of duty was coming out mm. yeah so no well. i hope it's an 18 but um that would be interesting to see um we speculate about wolverine and future spider-mans on our spider-man 2 spoiler cast which is available on all platform story number two capcom says it has a major unannounced title planned before march 24 uh, that's according to a japanese q a section published alongside the company's latest earnings results this week in which it mentioned the unannounced title in relation to how it intends to reach its year-end sales targets considering its aspirations for the unannounced game it's possible that it's related to one of capcom's two biggest franchises resident evil or monster hunter it's also possible since there are few major industry events left before march 24 that it could be announced during the game awards in december aiden bain i would put 20 pounds that this is monster hunter world 2 and it gets announced at the keelys what do you think i have never touched the monster hunter series i have no idea like it, it doesn't really look like my kind of thing but i was thinking if you were to if you were to spin a wheel on which one it was going to be 
Monster Hunter's been a little bit longer, is it not? Because oh, yeah. it was Rise. It's, it's, it's due, and it was in the Capcom leak. So it exists. Like it's uh, People have just been waiting for them to go, okay, it's time. Yeah, Which makes me think that's why they're, they're, com- they're comfortable enough doing it like December to March, because that's a very short like announcement period. But mm. um, I suppose, Pete, how long do games have to be announced before they come out these days? Do, do you think the days it's, of I mean, years in advance? It's like... I mean, you, the, the the big titles like your GTAs, they get ten years. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone everyone else is allowed five. Um, and I I want to see more of this King Kong kind of one year in development kind of stuff because <laughs> that because we get glitches and we get poor patched uh, poorly patched games at launch anyway. Let's just lean into the to to, to the mania. Let's lean into the craziness and just have that. <laughs> the 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 thing is though, like monster hunter is such a big deal and that monster hunter world mm. was the one that got it out of the psp doldrums monster hunter used to be the game you would see all the japanese teenagers playing on the psp on the way to mm. school and they'd all connect to each other because it was kind of built for that it was built for um, where did you go to school i know <laughs> um, osaka all those japanese <laughs> osaka. Right, okay that makes sense yeah yeah I did two... just teenagers over yeah. there man. Don't you I... specify I did... a lot of japanese around here <laughs> With their monster hunting. None of them speak <laughs> English. <laughs> yeah, the two years in Osaka and then a few more in Kyoto. But at that time, everyone was just talking Monster Hunter, this Monster Hunter, that. Yeah, the Monster yeah, Hunter yeah. world was the Sounds one. Sounds like the only monster in the room is you, Jordan. <laughs> to be quite frank. I often, They're hunting I often you. Feel that way. They can... uh, well, they, 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 did, they did an augmented reality game, didn't they? Yeah, Pokemon Go. They released. Uh, like, and, and they wanted to. And it was. I think it, I think for that kind of augmented reality thing, it was not a massive hit. But in the grand scheme of how much money one makes, it was a massive hit. Like I think it made money, didn't it, John? Yeah, it's, it's Niantic has a problem in the fact that the first game they made is one of the most successful of all time, being Pokemon Go. So everything mm. subsequently that hasn't yeah. been like the biggest greatest. I mean, they made a Harry Potter game that that failed. Like doing that is quite impressive. But Good Lord. Um, yeah, it seems like the Monster <laughs> Hunter one. The, seems to have done a bit better um but mm. monster hunter world was the game that made it mainstream that's the best selling yeah. monster hunter game as far as i'm aware so a two is very much mm. a, it's an easy sell at the game awards um so yeah it's uh i think it will probably be that it seems too early for too soon for resident people yeah, like resident, resident evil 4 9. was only like what seven months ago or something like that not yeah. even so you know you, you've got the time to leave the next resident evil to late 2024 or early 2025 i think going by like the, yeah. how frequently they've been releasing them over the last couple of years yeah and i mean no one on earth wants a remake of resident evil 5 so um i assume that the <laughs> it will be resident evil next one's nine in it so it'll be wasn't evil. this the one that was just coming out about how it was the biggest budget of the series like this was a story that just broke like or resi 5 Res- no 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 nine. Oh, nine. okay yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, maybe, but I, I, I'm pretty sure it's Monster Hunter. Um, I know, it will be. It will be, I think. If it's not Monster Hunter, I will eat my hat on stage with Jeff Healy, because, which will be easy to do, because getting on stage with yeah. Jeff Healy <laughs> seems like the easiest <laughs> thing in the world, to be honest. Um, <laughs> so, number three, Alan Wake's creative director wants to make a crazy, huge-budget, dark gothic fantasy game. Sam Lake has said in a new interview with GQ that um, it was asked if he would ever do anything else, and he said, quote, would I ever do anything else? Yeah, I'm still thinking that I will. There will be a time when I retire. It's just that this has all been so engaging. Uh, then he was asked uh, about what things he would like to do left. Uh, one was this crazy, huge budget, dark gothic fantasy, which I haven't used for anything yet. Lake, real name, which I didn't know, Sammy Antero Yarvi, um, has served oh. as the creative director at Remedy for decades. Working on Max Payne, Alan Wake, Quantum Break, and Control. Famously, he provided the face for the in-game model of Max Payne, a face that he pulls whenever he gets the chance. Um, <laughs> but, Aiden, as someone who has now completed 2023's Game of the Year, uh, Alan Wake 2, how ready are you for a crazy, huge-budget, dark gothic fantasy? I mean, dark gothic fantasy doesn't like the f- isn't quite what i like from you know like the alan wake side of things but at the same time let the man cook he can make whatever he wants now that game is i mean it's it's phenomenal i absolutely loved it it easily will be my game of the year i think and uh uh, yeah i mean if he's if he's going for like crazy ideas i don't know if they'll like get quite the same budget I'm, i'm 
I'm hesitant to say that they'll just get whatever budget they want for whatever idea they want. Because mm-hmm. I think Alan Wake still is to a degree, you know, existing IP tying into other IPs. So unless they do that in a way where you're like pulling in control fans and Alan Wake fans, you know, already has a bit of a base. So it, it can afford to be a little bit risky. But if this is a brand new mm-hmm. gothic fantasy thing, I don't know, there's, there's a lot more risk involved there. But yeah, as far as I'm concerned, I'd love to see whatever he wants to do. And I did think that Sam Lake wasn't a particularly Finnish name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how how famous do you have to be as a like video game designer to sort of just in, like in, invent a new name? I mean, I guess he's probably thinking that, you know, that his his, his Finnish name is kind of uh, possibly difficult for people to He didn't to, want to, to be to called Jar- like just... Sam Jarvey by Americans for, <laughs> yeah. for a decade. Yeah, didn't exactly, want to explain yeah, that it's Harvey. Care. Um, <laughs> Sam Sam Lake is a quality name though. That's that like, is... really, that's really punchy. I like that's a crazy. Sam Lake, Alan Wake. Yeah, yeah. it's just a, it's absolutely correct. <laughs> I agree. I w- let let them do whatever they're officially in the the category now of whatever they want to do. Like Alan Wake two proves it. They can just do whatever they want. And the fact that I mean the is a is it's the next story up. But they've provided uh, updates on Control two and Max Payne remake, which are the next games. Um, the Control two is in the proof of concept stage, meaning it's probably three four years away at this point mm-hmm. and they're also making max Payne one and two with rockstar combining both those games into one for one big remake and on top of that they have two other games so like with this um, this is a nice story in the sense that people are like yeah let's sam like do whatever they want but pete does he ever actually get time to do this considering how much they've got on their plate at the minute no, and I just worry. I think we'll find out how overworked Sam Lake is when his beautiful, thick hair starts <laughs> to thin out a little bit. That man is 53 years young, and he his hair is absolutely top class. I, I just I, Every time I see that guy, it's like, I just would love his hairline. <laughs> no way does he. It's just so strong and thick. And it looks like it can hold a whole jar of gel. It's just great stuff. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like it, 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 again, he'd need three different studios, I think, and he'd need to kind of like sort of plate spin on each one. Uh, but I mean, like he's already making pretty high budget stuff, and he like huge budget. You'd probably say that uh, this Alan Wake Two was a huge budget game, wouldn't you? I, I, I think it's like... hard to, hard to say, but from the look of it, definitely. I think mm. as well you've got to consider is whether this game will actually be a success or not. Like critically, do we know how well it's selling or how well mm. it will over the like the Christmas period? Because that could be a big contributing factor. Just because it's good doesn't, you know, if someone's going to choose between Spider Man and Alan Wake Two, they're going to choose Spider Man most of the mm. time. And so, the fact that Alan Wake isn't in any shops, so and is, uh, to, yeah, so there you go. And stuff. There's no Alan Wake there to to pack. No up. Christmas oh, gifts on the Steam Deck either. Yeah. Oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, you've, you've no Christmas gifts there or anything like that. And also, I do think it really does heavily rely on the fact that you know stuff about the first Alan Wake or whatever, mm. you know, things like that. Whereas I feel like you could kind of play Spider Man 2 oh, just because yeah. you want to swing around the city. He's Spider Man. It did. He's, that's he's that's Spider- all you know. Spider Man. He's, he's reportedly friends with Wolverine. Is uh, it was Control <laughs> a big seller? Because like obviously Control was excellent uh, and and critically acclaimed. Was that a huge a huge seller? For, I, for what I they don't think lived? huge. I think it did okay. Mm. Um, I'm I'm just. Uh, I mean, searching control sales is really not that helpful. I literally but the, done the same <laughs> thing very as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it sold over three million copies, which is pretty decent for a game of that size. Um, right. It's, it, they seem yeah, happy with it, but it's not a big, massive smash. I hope this one does mm. better. I still think, in retrospect, that not doing a physical copy of a game that ended up with like 92 Metacritic was maybe a mistake, but... Um, mm we'll see I'm, i can't wait to see this max Payne remake it's so interesting them doing this with rockstar because rockstar seemed like such a company that wouldn't want to do a co-development deal or a co-collaboration because they are so tight knit. like if there was anyone that mm. um I'd, I'd least expect to do that it would be them um but well, they're, leak- they're leaking their own stuff now so i mean <laughs> i mean that You'd you'd start a trust people outside your company if your own company couldn't keep a uh, little demo <laughs> demos uh, out of the hands of uh, fans. Yeah, I never actually played the the original two games of Max Payne, so I'm actually quite looking forward to that remake because uh, I love oh, cool. three, um, mm. and because one and two were PS2 era. Is that yeah, they're they're older. Yeah. See, I wasn't allowed to play games like that back then. Oh, <laughs> well, well, I remember it was kind of it was kind of tied in with a 3D Mark kind of. 
Were they sort of involved with 3D Marks, uh, one of their little um, sort of graphical kind of tests? I seem to recall Max Payne 1 coming out at the same time as the Matrix demo on on on, on, uh, <laughs> on 3D Mark. And in my head, I always kind of mix those two things together that it came out of a tech demo, the whole uh, bullet time stuff. But but I'm probably just misremembering that. <laughs> the Yeah, the, the that stuff was really uh, like technically impressive back then. And then 3 mm. was... Three was a really cool game, but it seemed that it didn't quite do it. It was a romp, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was a romp. It was a slow motion romp. I just mm. remember the bit where you're like fighting through. Uh, it's like a fake version of the Maracanã Stadium. That was a really good. Yeah, uh... that was lo- beautifully put together. And and why don't we fight through more football stadiums in video games? It's perfect. <laughs> Massive kind of like, like you know, you got the pitch itself. You got underground car parks. Video games love underground car yeah. parks. Yeah. Especially to see the way that Tottenham Stadium's constructed, where there's all those chambers like underneath it, where you can like store yeah. the pitch, like that. Be, be perfect. Ideal. Um, <laughs> but sadly, not. Sh- we'll be fighting through Celtic Park with a green brigade soon <laughs> enough. Uh, next story, uh, in in what continues to be a crap year for people that make video games, Bungie's layoffs mm. reportedly amount to around one hundred staff it was confirmed in monday that bungie was the latest sony interactive entertainment studio to be hit with layoffs though the scope of the job cuts wasn't clear at that time bloomberg is now reporting that staff were warned in a meeting earlier this month that revenue was running at around 45 percent below what was being projected which chief executive officer pete parsons reportedly attributed to poor player retention for destiny 2 it claimed that staff were told that the game's next expansion the final shape was being delayed from February 24 to June to give staff more time to improve it. Parsons also said uh, is also said to have told staff that salary and hiring freezes would be taking place, but two weeks later on Monday, around 100 staff were then told they would be laid off. Forbes writer Paul Tassi tweeted that more information he'd received from a source, including claims that many employee benefits lasted until the end of the month, meaning that because staff were laid off on October 30th, their benefits lasted one day. This was collaborated. Beautiful. Yeah, Beautiful. Just, just the video game industry, <laughs> ladies and so gentlemen. Typically, typically video game industry. Yeah. Like. <laughs> um, this was later corroborated by Bloomberg's report, which also noted that healthcare was a separate benefit and will still be available for the next three months to those who were let go. Um, Pete, the video game industry seems to never be better in terms of the quality of games. Why are why is job uh, job safety such a bad a, a bad thing? Uh, I think because um, CEOs and financial officers um, project way too hard, I would say. And money is quite expensive to lend these days and COVID and everything. You know, we, as um, an owner of a company, uh, I'm I'm not, I am an owner of a company, I guess, a couple, but um, I I think... um, you have to be realistic with your projections and you have to, um, you know, feather your nest accordingly. So if you're projecting <clears throat> that a video game, uh, uh, you know, is going to be um, this popular, um, then perhaps it, the failure is in you rather than uh, the actual people who make the, the, the product itself. One, one would suggest anyway. <laughs> yes. Um, Aiden, was, I often wonder about these companies that rely so heavily on one game. Like Destiny mm. 2 is Bungie's only thing. Was this kind of... Uh, inevitable or like a dangerous strategy what do you think i suppose it's the thing with like a game like destiny is always going to have highs and lows because i mean that's been the same thing throughout the entire run of destiny and destiny 2 we had um i was speaking to someone about it just earlier this morning about how things weren't looking good for it you know a few years ago but then they implemented so many things that like the players were asking for and then forsaken came out and it was like story wise everyone liked that one and then it was back up to like high players and now right now we're in the low where lightfall didn't quite hit the same Mm -hmm. um and uh, it's it is an awkward one with these kind of games because it just it it's so difficult as well now for like players to 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 stay or get into destiny um so really the only thing that can really happen is either the old players come back or people slowly trickle out of it. And I think having that in a lower kind of quality is only going to lead to that. And it's it's been a kind of horrible thing to read because I've been a huge fan of of Destiny, basically, in in its entire run. And seeing like them even fire people like Michael Salvatore, who's like the guy that done some of the best video game music ever through this game. He was the co-composer of the 
Ooh, yeah. Like, come on. I mean, literally 20% of the fun of Destiny is the music. It's so good. And then to fire someone like that, not only that, just like right at the end, you know, the final shape, which is the one that was delayed, it's supposed to be like the big culmination of 10 years of this. I say storytelling kind of lightly because like the light and darkness <laughs> thing is a bit of a piss take in some, in some ways. But yeah, I, it's it's rough. And I didn't like as well that there was a bit of like, it was like cloak and dagger of like whose fault was this is this a sony thing of sony bought them in and then gutted them or is this a bungee thing and, and they're just clearing out their own staff and i think you're right people saying like projections are just too high for things like this i think they, they expect things to just be we're gonna throw another season at it we're gonna throw another big expansion and people are gonna play it and buy buy our stuff mm. but like that isn't always the case especially when you have so i mean like 2023 in particular we've got so many like high rating games that'll be pulling people away from you know part of the reason i don't play destiny all the time or a game like apex legends for example because i was like you know i actually would quite like to play something else i don't want to just play this game all the time yeah. and when you're getting like 10 out of 10s 9 out of 10s 8 out of 10s coming out every other week which has been the case for the last few months people are going to want to move away from a game like Destiny, which is staying relatively the same over like a six month period. It makes me wonder if during the pandemic, when people were forced to like basically take up one of these games as like a social space, mm. that all these executives were like, this is going to last forever. Everyone's yeah. going to be locked in their houses forever. And mm. now that we're getting back into a more uh, traditional cadence with uh, big games that the, 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 they seem to be uh, in trouble. So. yeah i think it's gonna it's i mean it's the same in like our industry as well as like actual development where there's like the effects of covid there was such a big boom for everyone yeah. you know every like oh my god everyone's reading guides everyone's reading reviews everyone's looking at gameplay videos because no one's got anything to do they're sitting in the house and then like that all starts to just come down it's only natural that it would after yeah. something like that so i think there probably have been a lot of people that thought no no this is the breakthrough point for video games like it's already big <laughs> but now it's on the up and up and it just isn't really the case no nope. people are out living their lives all the markets have c crashed no one wants video games no one wants shitty podcasts am i right pete <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants them nobody needs them there's too many of them far too many podcasts the amount of podcasts that get advertised that I, alongside this podcast i'm like i've never you've made that up there's no way there's 800 <laughs> episodes exist. of this. Um, <laughs> the only podcasts I listen to are this one and the Look and Pete show. Isn't that right, Pete? <laughs> you, you're telling me you didn't listen to my, my old film podcast that had like 80 episodes now? You never listened to that one? I don't. I famously don't like films. Um, so <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot I about that. I simply okay. wouldn't listen to <laughs> podcast about them. The man with a film degree. I know. Like the well, same I'm, film degree as me. <laughs> if anyone's qualified to not like them, it's me. I have I've studied them uh, yeah. meticulously. Watched loads of them. I've watched loads of them. Not a fan. No, not into it. <laughs> Simply After not four into it, years, I decided I just don't like them. Yeah. <laughs> oh mate, if I hadn't, uh, I had the revelation well before the four year period. That's why I started making FIFA videos that led me on this path to, uh, <laughs> to be a games journalist. Uh, I have mm. a I have a small. Uh, we, I meant to talk about this during the Alan Wake section, but I've got a grievance, right? So, uh, I bought some clothing from Makia, the the Finnish clothing brand that has done a, a collaboration with Alan Wake. First of all, I had to buy two hundred oh, yeah. euros worth of clothes to for them to ship to the UK. Thankfully, <laughs> I did a deal with some lovely listeners from this podcast. They bought some stuff and they gave me the money, so we we did like a a package deal. Oh. Then the other night, um, more trips to the post office for you, John. God, I know. <laughs> um, Good God. Me and uh, my partner were enjoying a lovely evening of WWE Live, uh, and I receive an email <laughs> which reads, uh, "Your DHL package has some customs uh, on it," and I'm like, oh, "Okay, I was expecting ah. this. I didn't pay. I didn't pay that in Finland. I expected this. Um, 193 pounds. 193 pounds. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, sweat, Brexit, Brexit, baby. sweat, pissing off me, and I'm like, and I'm sitting with like websites trying to calculate it and i'm like okay this is definitely wrong the next day i get an email being like oh we were wrong it was a uh, 70 pound and i'm like okay right that's 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 fine still chunky still chunky, they've, they've tricked you there i think i think they're like start them with the 180 yeah. and then bring them down to the 70 and you'll happily so, pay it 
So that in Finland is 25%. So 25% of right. 200 and then plus like some some other wee bits and pieces. I was like, okay, this is, this is fine. But uh, yeah, that was a <laughs> that was a scary moment. I was trying to enjoy uh, EO Sky versus Charlotte at WWE Live. And um, the... WWE Live was good, right? Uh, thank you. Because the... yeah, well, you were worried about which stars were going to be in Glasgow at the Hydro yeah. and which stars are going to be in Berlin doing the show. Um, the German tour had a much better lineup, but uh, I, right. I shan't complain because the, the tickets the tickets were very kindly provided. But so oh. we got Drew McIntyre. Everyone was happy about that because we were in Scotland. He says, that... "Imagine if he did no, I know. Germany. Imagine <laughs> no, that would have been a real f you." But the <laughs> that he came out and said, well, "I'm going to boot your boys," and everyone was like, "Whoa." Um, <laughs> <laughs> reading reading uh, Glasgow Twitter yeah. on a bit of paper I can't um, but uh, we got EO, EO Sky versus Charlotte which was a very good match to two excellent mm. performers um, mm. but the main event of uh, LA Knight versus Sol- Solo Sokoa um, we uh, we left to beat the traffic let's put it that way um, because <laughs> LA Knight got a reaction like he was the fucking rock coming out like people mm. were so into LA Knight I appreciated that but the rest of the tour was uh, the rest of the, the lineup was not the was was no. not the strongest. Who got who got Asuka? Because she was on some of the posters. Oh, they, we didn't get Asuka. We didn't get Rey Re Mysterio Asuka. was on the poster, didn't appear. Asuka was on the didn't poster, appear. didn't appear. The Usos appear, were on the yeah. poster, didn't appear. Didn't appear. Um, <laughs> card subject to change. Um, yeah, it was nice. funny because the section we were sitting in, you know, ICW, the Glasgow based promotion. Um, all mm. all those boys were sitting behind us, so we were clearly in like the friends and family section because <laughs> it was just like all these burly wrestlers <laughs> sitting behind us watching Pretty Deadly. Um, <laughs> when we come back, I'm going to tell you how to win this lovely copy of A Handheld History. We'll see you in a minute. Maybe cons kill people without looking them in the face, but I ain't a fink, dig. made your last delivery kid sorry you got twisted up in this scene from where you're kneeling must seem like an 18 karat run of bad luck truth is the game was rigged from the start and we are back if you'd like to win a copy of handheld history i have two to give away uk only uk only uk only uk only mm-hmm. you have to email podcast at videogameschronicle.com make the subject handheld history and just tell me your favorite handheld aiden what's your favorite handheld and i'll, I'll look it up in this lovely book um i like i remember quite vividly getting my ds light when, Ooh, uh, for Christmas one nice. year, the white one. I remember being very excited that I played that for a ridiculous amount of time on, on the day. Super Mario Bros. had just come out. The new mm. Super Mario Bros. Um, oh, this is, lo- this is lovely. For, vid- for video uh, watchers, they have really high quality images of all the revisions of the DS in here. Mm. Which I would, oh, nice. I would just like to sit and, uh, sit and paw through. I really like the classic white look with the gloss yeah. on it and the two little squares. Mm. I, I, I quite like that. It was tidy, wasn't it? It was a really nice tidy design. Yeah, I remember going to school. You had a. Did you guys get like golden time in school on a Friday? In, pri- golden, yeah, in primary golden school, time. yeah. yeah. And it, what is golden? I'm so old. What is golden, golden time? time? You just got to do whatever you want. Yeah, so golden <laughs> time was like want. I want to say maybe half an hour at the end of a Friday, where it was just like right. go have fun and talk throw. to. You. Yeah, yeah. But everyone, <laughs> everyone would go on their get their DS out and like go on Pixel right. Chat. And just be sitting like drawing things on Pixel Chat for like half an hour, and almost <laughs> like you know you get the occasional dick in there, but keep in mind we're like yeah. we're, we're young people at this point, so most of the time it's like just coloring the whole thing in black. That was like the thing. So you just have like <laughs> you just have like ten people sitting like scribbling on their their DS light, hoping to cover every inch of that little touch screen. But um, it was the good the good days, you know, when life was simpler. Yeah. When you when you couldn't play Max Payne. No, when I couldn't play Max. Pen. <laughs> <laughs> ay, ay, ay. The, I, I, I need to retell the story um, that was being told on this podcast of when Picto Chat was getting rolled out at E3, and um, a journalist who will remain nameless uh, drew a big cock on the Picto Chat at E3, only to find out that it was being projected over his head, and sitting yes. there watching was the father of video games, Shigeru Miyamoto. <laughs> Yes, he's got a willy. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so, you know, 
He's like, so we can only assume that he'd seen one before. <laughs> we can just looks so. up at the Pictou chat screen, goes relatable. Yeah, I get you, man. I mean, yeah, I mean to, be, to be fair, like, I've been to Japan a few times. I mean, that is very much their sense of humor. Oh yeah, they love that. They love bums. They love Poe. They love willies. <laughs> 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 just make sure they're blurred out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is the is the uh, John is the GP is the game is the game park uh, thirty two uh, in the book? Probably not. So it was like an unlovable sort of um, uh, Korean, I think, um, uh, game system, the GP thirty two, and um, the car the, the games came on little kind of uh, you know like before SD cards there was like thick lads oh, were, like, yeah, yeah. really big odds but then there was like really thin ones that they were like the thin thinness of a small bit of cardboard um that's what the, that's what uh you, the games used to come on and there was about five box titles uh the screen wasn't backlit it was a load of rubbish but people used to put emulators on it and that was very much i remember i remember playing through um a few graphic adventures on it. what's the name again <laughs> on the scum engine game park 32 game park I'm, it probably wasn't. It wasn't really a big deal. It wasn't they've really. Got, it was they've very got a much lot in, of absolute nothings here. So <laughs> it was an enthusiast's one. The GP32. I, I, every time I uh, go looking for a, a, a legacy USB cable from a big um, box I've got, I always see it at the bottom, and I say, like, "I wonder if that's worth any money." And you go on eBay, and it's not worth. Anything. I mean, the, the, they've got the Mega Duck in here, so <laughs> the Mega Duck. <laughs> there's, wow. There's every chance that they have. Fantastic. Uh, but, <laughs> yes, if you all the. Yeah. The engage, what what a machine! They need to bring it back. The N-gage, the game king, yeah. that's what they call me. Um, yeah, if you'd like to win one of two, please, uh, please, please participate in this in this fabulous contest. Uh, UK only, UK only. I will not send this to <laughs> parts unknown. Um, next story. Setup images confirm the PlayStation 5's disc drive requires an online pairing. This is a follow up from our story from last week or a couple of weeks ago, or God knows when. Um, because the new PS5 model can have a detachable disk drive, it has to be paired, much like uh, a controller does, uh, with a little bit of firmware. Uh, this isn't the most important thing. The most important thing is, have you seen the images of this new PlayStation 5? Yeah. Have you seen the way this looks when compared to a normal PlayStation 5? Because good <laughs> God, does it look like a knockoff that you would find in the Barras. <laughs> Aaron, what do you think about this horrible little machine? I'm surprised. I didn't think it was too bad, to be honest. I think, I mean, like size is the 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 main thing here. I mean, looking at that, the, the PS5, <laughs> the, the PS5 is like too big for most people. I think, you know, when mm. when you're, t- I'm, I'm feeling like I'm going is, into is this improving things though. <laughs> too big for cowards. Too big for cowards. <laughs> <laughs> Make that the centerpiece of your living room, not your yeah. TV. Um, yeah. No, so. I, d- I don't mind it. I'm not always like a massive speaking about how nice the glossy DS looked. I don't think it looks the best in the console. Um, I like the matte finish of the PS5 and the the sort of like accentuated disc drive coming out of the side is a little bit. Uh, I don't. I'm not a hundred percent on it. Um, there are elements of the design that I think are confusing to the as in why. I know why, but why did they do the the design where they had to have a new, different kind of stand? And not only that, two different kinds of stands as well yeah. that you have to buy. It's complete bullshit, I think. It's just another way for people like, oh, you want this to stand vertically like almost everyone does. And if you don't, I find it weird. I don't like I don't like horizontal PS5 people. It, it freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> but if you're if you're a vertical, like that's how I say most people have it. Oh, well, that's 30 pounds extra. Yeah. I think the only thing going in their favor there is really the fact that it's the same price. But um, to to talk quickly about that connection with the the disc drive, I don't. I mean, it's annoying, I suppose, but I don't think it's like the thing. I don't everyone think anyone will notice. No, because like, there's like people are like I've seen people in the comments on our channel saying like I am that's it, it's a pass. I'm not buying this. I'm like, yeah. How are what you were commenting? You, what were you planning on, on doing on it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like how how are you commenting on this? video without internet connection you know and something like that is going to be if you don't even have access to internet or you've got your mobile or whatever you can probably hotspot it for like five minutes to update this because i'm going to yeah, imagine it's not going to be like a five gig download is it yeah, it's going to be, be like megabytes. 100 meg. you're not yeah. downloading warzone onto your disk yeah. drive like <laughs> I, I, don't... I, I remember when half-life 2 uh, first came out and that had to um phone home uh, and that was quite controversial mm-hmm. i think back in the day uh, and so i remember taking my hard drive out of my computer 
at home, taking it into work and um, sort of opening up. I don't know why I was allowed to do this. People just let me get on with it, uh, working for a local <laughs> government uh, Quango, uh, uh, a kind of um, a housing authority uh, in, in, in Victoria. And uh, yeah, I just had my computer open and I was, I was making Half-Life 2 via Steam call to the steam network just so i could get ratified <laughs> so i could take it back home just to make it work very bizarre time weird mm, yeah the, usually this is a situation i was hoping that the slim would look okay because i'm always conscious of the fact that i've had it's been about three years now since i've had my ps5 it's been on every day it's been on for hundreds of hours my ps5 will die far quicker than the average joe's and if it was to be replaced it would likely be replaced by a slim but i just yeah not and into it. My PlayStation Five has only just started making sound when mm. it when it. I think I just need to clear out the the vents. But I was thinking if I manage to get my hands on a on a slim, that happily become my main one. Also, my PS Five is just sitting on my desk. It takes up hundreds of space. That thirty percent reduction in size, mate. I'm there for it. That's why I've got two desks. I've got I've got de- I've got a desk that has my consoles and my my laptops and my uh, hardcore drugs on this side and, <laughs> and i've just got my, my my clean one here that has uh, cans of monster and um <laughs> <laughs> packets of sudafed god bless yeah Not sponsored. Uh, he's more animal than man these days john yeah. it's like it's like a wwe cautionary tale <laughs> <laughs> he's off his head on on pseudo ephedrine again <laughs> look it makes the day go quicker you've got to appreciate <laughs> it it makes your heart go quicker <laughs> taking them with monsters the real way to do it um <laughs> speaking of things that don't make my heart go quicker aaron mm. you had the 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 unfortunate honor of playing uh ubisoft's james cameron's avatar frontier of pandora mm-hmm. tell us all about it <laughs> mm-hmm. well i'm gonna start with a little bit of context of the fact that i'm a massive avatar fan the and only. part of me feels like i have to defend myself when i do this <laughs> but at the same time Mate, I love a bit of sci-fi escapism. I was 13 when the first movie came out. It was just perfect time and place, and it stayed with me mm. since. I enjoyed the second one. So I was really excited with this. I know a lot of people saw the the, the trailer or whatever and went, Far Cry, but Avatar. I mm-hmm. think that's completely fine. Because I think if you take the Far Cry games in isolation on their own, they're good games, right? They're not bad. They're not amazing. They're good games. But then you give it a setting that's cool and looks nice and has lower kind of elements to it. That elevates it to me. So that makes it a better game. And that was kind of what I got from this. And like aesthetically and audio wise, I would say like the nailed, it's so authentic to the movies. Because yeah. that was the first thing I was like, how, how authentic is this going to feel? And the demoist was setting me up. And I just put the headphones on and I listened to it for 30 seconds. And immediately I was like, oh, this is Avatar. Like that, yeah. that's, and that's what you want from a game like this. So I think some people will be quick to judge it and saying it's just Avatar and it's not going to push boundaries in any way. But I think if you're looking for either as an Avatar fan, you're looking for something that's like ties into that Avatar fantasy in a video game form, you're going to love it. And if you're looking for an open world game, with a cool sci-fi setting, you're probably going to like it as well, even if you're not like the biggest fan of Avatar. I think there's things to enjoy about it, but yeah, I, I liked it. I, I enjoyed is, it. Is there like, Aaron, is there, is there, is there like a bit of um, like signature music, you know, like um, Indiana Jones or uh, Jurassic Park that kind of brings you in with Avatar and being, a, being a fan? Well, you know, there's, I, I'm not the really the kind of guy that would know a specific track, but to be, yeah. to talk about a completely different uh event i went to like one of those things in glasgow where they play like movie stuff and it was supposed to be primarily for lord of the rings and they're playing it with a live Mm. orchestra it just randomly i didn't actually even know they were doing it they played a bit of avatar in it and that was Mm. the best bit in the whole thing i loved it i think the original score from james horner who sadly passed away and is no longer doing the the score for the next movie i mean it's it it's amazing in the first one i think it really really is good and and that was one of the things i said in my preview was that like the score in particular i don't know if they've like taken it straight from or it's something new for this but it just it slotted in that way where like i didn't think oh this is ubisoft trying to do avatar an avatar soundtrack it just sounded like an avatar soundtrack so i would say there's like there's a vibe to the music that kind of brings me in i would say rather than a singular mm. track right okay 
Interesting. Avatar, of the galaxy. Big tall blue boys. Um, the do you not think that like um, because I think sometimes like video game tie-ins can just use that mu- use the music, and that's half the struggle, isn't it? That's half. Like it's it's a really easy way of sort of dragging you in over and above you know the licensed faces and likenesses mm-hmm. and stuff. Well, I, th- I think that's that's kind of one of the things that makes this quite exciting because. I suppose in the same way that Hogwarts Legacy was like, oh, you get to explore this place that you like if you're a Harry Potter fan. Uh, th- it's kind of the same, same thing because you're going into this world and it's like not necessarily like a setting because it's set in a different region of Pandora if you're interested in a little bit of the, the facts there. But it's not the same forest as the Avatar movies. It's um, But it has like that kind of... I don't know the, the, that iconography of of the of the films where it's like yeah. those orange flower things that suck in when you go up to them, or or the um, little spinning glowing lizards, or the can you have hair sex? Not not in the demo at least, mm. but you do you do you do <laughs> you know you do, you do plug yourself into a couple of animals. Hell yeah! So, so it's, it's there. Steady. <laughs> steady, steady. <laughs> I think there's a I think there's a video floating around Twitter about that sort of <laughs> uh, this week. Um, uh, do, do you think that like I always start thinking with like um, tie-in games that are based on completely or almost entirely CGI experiences? Since it's a licensed game, can they not just give them the give them the um, the actual 3D models and then just, you know there's there's the world. Go reduce the polygons on this yeah. <laughs> and just stick it in. I, that I, I, I do wonder <laughs> if the 3D models used for the film would be too much. If if they would be like, mm. so, oh yeah, I mean they would be. Yeah. But I mean, surely you could procedurally just reduce them down to uh, to something. You know, it's something. Is, is Jake like Sully in it? Is have they got whatever his name is, Sam Johnny Face, whatever whatever that mm. actor's name is? Um, no, they do they do not have my guy Sam Worthington in it. Uh, mm. But it's it's um, set before like fifteen years after or ten years after the first movie, but before the Way of Water, which was the the movie from last year. Uh, and because it's set in a different place, I don't know how much it will really tie into the movies at all, other than it being the humans are back to mm. conquer the forest. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's got, for me as a big Avatar fan, it's got like, I, I still think it will cap out at something like an eight. I can imagine because there there are, like I'm saying, it's a fun game. The, the the nostalgia factor for me is elevating it the same way like again like i'm saying with hogwarts i'm sure hogwarts had its scores inflated a little just because people were like i love harry potter like how much do you like harry potter that game if you're not a harry potter fan is it actually well, fun? <laughs> as someone who was afflicted by that um exact issue that's actually you sold it a bit to me because a lot of hogwarts legacy was i i've been wanting to play this game since i was about five years old and Mm -hmm. and actually explore this world with this music it's playing on the stuff that warner brothers did like from it's all the film iconography so i can it's like it's very evocative like it's a very easy trick to do that but it's an effective one like it it doesn't make it any yeah like it's legit and i think as well when people were like I think there's a big question over this game of like who asked for it, who wants it, mate. These two movies made five oh, billion at the box office. <laughs> that doesn't you don't get five billion at the box office yeah. without there being some kind of fan base. And like video game people are just a bit sniffy about Avatar. I don't, I've never really mate, understood film that, but... film people are sniffy about Avatar. Everyone's sniffy about <laughs> Avatar. The films are balls. That's nah, what sniffy mate. About <laughs> nah, mate. Blue balls. <laughs> nah. Oh. The, 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 no, 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 I like them. I like them, I, and I think I think it will be a good game. I, I I can't see it really getting lower than like I think it will be okay. sevens. I, I think it will be sevens mm. for a lot of people, to be honest. But unlike the majority of like people that read review scores, if I see a seven, I don't think, oh mate, that's a dead game. You know, that's still mm. a that's still a decent game. But and that's and then presumably that's enough for the fan base. Exactly. You know? That's it's, you're not expecting much more. Right? Yeah, I think that's the thing. You get a, a solid foundation elevated by the material and i think that was mm. the thing combining the far cry formula which people already like because far cry games still sell you know whenever they come out i'm a big fan but probably my favorite video game series of the last 20 years i just i just play through yeah it. like I, I pe- don't know why like collecting stuff yeah exactly it's <laughs> like, like they don't cars. they don't push boundaries like, but people enjoy them like you yeah. know and and that's i think part of the the issue with that series is it's been kind of getting a little bit stale with the settings that's why i actually liked five so much 
because it was like we'll do something different we'll set it in america whereas before it's like another tropical forest or whatever and i suppose you could say that about this but there's like the lore there that i think expands that you know like when you kill an animal in this one you'll do your little i see you animal i <laughs> you know i respect you as you go into the afterlife Sorry or about whatever. That. yeah Sorry for killing you know because it's, it's like things like that that tie it into the universe that i really like um and also mm. it looks amazing i mean i was yeah. playing on i was playing on pc so what's the ps5 version gonna look like console version gonna look like don't know but I thought it looked really, really nice, especially during the day. I thought the nighttime stuff, because obviously it's all bioluminescence, kind of let me down a little bit. But mm -hmm. the daytime stuff looks amazing because you just get the foliage is going crazy. Like it's just everything moving Alive. all the time. It, it's really, really cool. It's yeah. a good game, mate. Just try it Tell out. Me round. I bet I will. VGC's next five out of five. Oh, yeah. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope there's something else out that week that I'm reviewing instead because it feels like it would go right in my wheelhouse. Um, <laughs> only thing I've really been playing this week, uh, City Skylines 2, which I've been enjoying. Um, I've been... Uh, I, I jump in two-footed without any tutorials because I played a lot of City Skylines 1 and um, turns out my memory is not quite what it used to be. The town was... A mess. All a mess. The under sewage in the streets. Exactly. So I was trying to connect <laughs> the sewage and the water to the to the different plants, but it was just a spaghetti of pipes that wouldn't connect to each other. So poor, <laughs> poor people were getting like five sets of pipes, none of them interconnected, going past their house. Um, Sounds like your bath. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sounds like your house, John. I know. Um, <laughs> thankfully, the, 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 it's only the bath that's the problem. Everything else is fine. I'm going to start showering in the sink. Um, yeah. But then I started I started a new town, and it's just really. It's a really enjoyable kind of numbers go up type of game and they've done some interesting mm. things where you can play it in a mode where not everything's unlocked from the jump so as your town gets bigger you basically go up a level and it's like a skill tree almost so you'll earn skills and it'll be like do you want to unlock a big hospital or a big police station and it makes you build the town in a more sensible way so you're not just immediately like okay let, let's do 10 high rises and there's no shops and there's no bit there's no there's no con there's no construction there's no uh, industry for anyone to work in um i'm playing it on uh basically one of the most powerful pcs on the market and it still doesn't run very well which is uh says a lot about um we spoke last week about the, the teeth men that are all over the, the teeth, town the teeth men but... is that the kind of level of stuff you need to think about when playing these games because i've always been intrigued but never got around to playing a game like that so you're so, having to like organize whether there's shops for people to to go to and stuff around the building kind of so if you imagine it if you if you built a grid with the roads you, uh -huh. you then get like a paint kind of tool to paint either side of the road that'll just be like green if you want it to be houses blue if you want it to be shops yellow if you right. want it to be industry and you'll have a wee meter in the bottom that says you need more xyz it's really it's really simple like that stuff's right, really okay. intuitive but as your city gets bigger and there's more stuff to deal with then you'll have to deal with crime and all this other oh, stuff that's cool actually <laughs> it's it's really it's really really fun and the way they've done expansion uh in this one is you just drag the map out and you'll see like all the squares around your original square and you can just buy them and make your city bigger and bigger and bigger so right. um i have natural disasters turned on so i look forward to that uh impacting my my poor little town <laughs> sooner rather than later <laughs> You ever been into these um uh these playing god games, Pete? You've got a god complex. Everyone knows it. I, I just I just want some control in my own life. So uh, <laughs> um, I remember sort of, but I, I remember you know I was a big Sim City guy back in the yeah. day, and I, I, I do I have played. I think I played the first City Skylines uh, a little while ago, but um yeah, I, I think I remember buying um Air Train. Uh, you probably don't remember Air Train, but that was well, Albert like Maxis. Prince Albert. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> yeah, the much, yeah um uh so, I've, so um i remember playing that quite a lot when i was a kid even though i really wasn't into trains and stuff i mean they're very charming they're the sort of games that you sort of go around someone's house and the the uncle is in is 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 pottering about yeah. on his uh on his pc back in the day but uh, uh but and that's why i think it's interesting that like a lot of these games even like your your, your civilizations and stuff like they're um they, they they do take a heck of a lot out of your computer performance wise so like these enthusiast level um pcs are the only things that can run them half the time so but 
you would imagine that it's a much broader game than someone who would usually regard themselves as being a, um, a video game player. Because like, doesn't your doesn't your dad only play one golf? He's got access to all of your Steam titles. Yeah, he has. But he only plays the golf game. He he could play any game he wants, but he plays Tiger Woods PGA. <laughs> uh, whatever yeah. the two K PGA with Tiger Woods is on the Xbox, mm. and despite the <laughs> fact that he, there's not a game in the world I couldn't get him, and he's like, nah. Just keep playing there. The... <laughs> yeah, but that, that's something that's proper dad stuff, yeah. isn't it? So like, I I always think of these games as dad games. They have one game and they play it every hour, every spare hour they've got. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's good. Uh, I'll keep pottering away at it. I'm also in the midst of an early football manager save. That's just that's it's not it's not it's not going well. It's just it's just it's too not much. going well. The... I, pre- I presume you're you're um, managing your 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 beloved. Um, I am um, indeed. Or... It's, I mean, it's right. it's going fine. It's just the first couple of months of a football manager save. You have got so much admin to do before you can even actually play it's the just game. T- it's just t- going, just telling your assistant manager to take yeah. over everything. It's just there's just so many. Like I, I know they have him, him uh, put in options in the past where you just sort of you just look after certain things. But even then, that you want to fine tune it and sort of go look. I, I'm I'm about half a season through a um, Ventfrakofu J League Two uh, save, <laughs> and I think I don't think we've lost or drawn a single match. Uh, and yet my um, football team don't respect me and have unified. They're playing so well because they are unifying against me, a common enemy. A, the words common enemy was, was was listed as one of the reasons why they're playing so well. So, you know, get stuff, Ben yeah. off. I'm doing my best. Are, is, right? is your manager, uh, are you a guy, Jim? Is your manager from Hartlepool in the game? Oh, yeah. I'm from, yeah, I'm a Newcastle United fan. I'm from where I'm from. I'm a five foot eight, um, a frog bellied, uh, uh, ill looking man. Um, yeah, it's it's it's, it's I am a, an atrocious wreck of a man, but I'm uh, I'm in I'm in I'm in the uh, I'm in I'm in a lovely part of uh, Japan at the foot of Mount Fuji. I'm having a lovely time. So there's a, <laughs> I'm having fun. There's a, My team isn't. There's a Scottish boy on TikTok who's recently moved to Japan that I follow, mm. and he went to a, a, a game recently, and the. I couldn't believe the attendance for like a, a not a minor but like a kind of mid table J League side. Like the place was absolutely pumping. Like it was just right. like a Champions League final. It's just well, they've got like a, a lot of them have like flag sections yeah. where they just spend all their time just waving blum flags and stuff. <laughs> we need to get the VGC podcast as a sponsor for a J League Two side. I feel like we could pull that off. I feel like that <laughs> wouldn't be that wouldn't be. T- yeah. I'm shocked the Ramble hey, hasn't ever been asked to like be a. A shirt front. Oh, we've been asked. We can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> we've been asked loads of times. Yeah. Oh wait, do we need to pay them? I didn't realise that's how it worked. I thought we. I thought... <laughs> that's how sponsors work. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Well, I'm afraid <laughs> Yokohama F Marinos will have to go without yeah. for a- another season. Um, I asked on uh-huh. X what your favourite video game movie tie-in was because I was thinking about that Wolverine game. Uh, let's get a few mm. of the responses here. Chris Wall says Alien 3 on the Mega Drive. Never played it personally because I'm not an old ass man. Um, <laughs> James Troughton, though, with the real shit. Uh, Revenge of the Sith. Uh, on, uh, on the PS2. That's a goated game. That's yeah. a good one. Okay, yeah, yeah. We're, the pod race and stuff in, in those ty- the pod racer game was good oh yeah that, that was a very, the, the pod racing arcade game that had the actual thing the, oh, they had beautiful. one of those in the Trocadero God dressed it that was just incredible they also had one downstairs in Hamleys uh, on uh, on whatever London uh, Street that is they, they, they had one of those they did in have there. Regent Street yeah they, they did have a they did a little game section down yeah. there for a while didn't they? now it's just if you go down there now it's like game like the shop um, and it's all like mm. you want to buy uh, razor pc accessories etc so no really thank expensive, you expensive clacky mechanical keyboard yeah. for 20 quid over <laughs> what you spend on amazon yeah brilliant lots of shout <laughs> for uh the chronicles of riddick escape from butcher bay i've seen that uh, mm. a lot of times which I love for that. It, mu- it must be it must be a banger the the and a good shout for the toy story 2 game and the aladdin game you can play toy story 2 on the playstation 5 if you pay the million pounds for playstation plus premium now yeah um and of course, one that uh, Pete has referenced, Peter Jackson's King Kong. Oh, on mate, Xbox 360. I was going to say, if it wasn't mentioned, that was one I was going to say. I love that game. Very easy, thousand achievement points on that. Um, um, also, if there's none mentioned in it, have to rep it. James Cameron's Avatar: The Game oh, on 316 go. PS3. That was a <laughs> that's a pretty good one. You got to play as either the humans or the Avatar. It's pretty fun. I'm just saying. You play as a colonizer. I mean, I suppose that's every Call of Duty game, so it's not not really that um, 
That's shocking. Oh, speaking yeah. of that Blade Runner, that that Blade Runner um, point and click was was quite good back in the day. But I, but you guys are f- not from a generation that had really terrible tie-ins. Like, there was there was a level of performance that tie-ins had to have. Yeah. Um. It, when when you guys were were in short trousers, but like I'm from the generation of games like give give my regards to Broad Street, <laughs> a, a, a tie-in for a Paul McCartney biopic film Ooh. that nobody watched. And it's just you driving around Mornington Crescent. You're driving around London, and then you do a bit of walking. There was so many. There were Alfred is in Pet, not necessarily a <laughs> film. There was tie-ins with that. I remember one of my favourite games was um, Adrian Anderson, uh, Edmondson Post, um, uh, Post Young Ones and Pre-Bottom, um, a sort of Christmas book he released called How to Be a Complete Bastard. And you would just walk around a party and just try and get ejected from the party by blowing off, drinking bleach, um, killing animals, just the, being an absolute sociopath. Like the the, the Spectrum sort of C64 uh, bedroom coding era was just an era of just massive licensed games and terrible, terrible uh, execution. Uh, there, there's so many bad ones. Cliffhanger, <laughs> awful. I feel like we had some some good ones in our day. Like it was yeah. like uh, there was the Godfather game on. Yeah, I think Godfather it was PS2 and, 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 and PS... all right. uh, on PSP. Was it as well? So, I seem to remember playing it on PSP. Yeah, um, the, sequ- the sequel was on 360, and it was actually decent. It was better than Mafia, in my opinion. The 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 Lord of the Rings: Return of the King. That yep. was a good one. That was a good one. Someone stole that from me in school. Well, I. Lent it to a friend who then brought it back, and the day that he, he gave it to me, and I put it in my bag, and someone stole it in my bag. So I was always good at that. I used to steal Pokemon cards in school. Um, <laughs> doesn't surprise me. <laughs> um, not lots, just one specific. Just one enough that, that you could get one away with it. One. Just enough. <laughs> Look, if you're going to if you're going to leave your shining Gyarados from Neo Discovery sitting on your desk, when we all go down to the to the teacher to sit around her while she reads i'm just gonna slide that in my old pocket <laughs> well i can't even remember whose it was so they can't legally prosecute me um <laughs> the I, th- I think they could have a go <laughs> mm, statute of limitations it's probably uh, yeah probably, probably about went, 22 yeah. years at this point now um <laughs> yeah the, the tying so speaking of lord of the rings game when when i was speaking to your man brett from immortals of avium he made those lord of the rings games and i was like can we just talk for an hour about those games and you could see the ea (laughs) pr person getting nervous like we're not going to get a message across if you just talk about the lord of the rings games (laughs) that no one can buy anymore anyway um anyway we will be back next week with call of duty the that campaign goes live tonight so what um, what We'll be seeing what that's all about. Shooting people, I expect. Lots of shooting yeah. people in the head. Shooting mm. people in the balls. Um, mm. Hopefully I'll have a working bath by next week. I know everyone's on tenter hooks. Um, <laughs> uh, once again, a handheld history. Uh, email podcast at videogameschronicle.com. Subject line handheld history and tell me your favourite handheld. You can find us on YouTube. Search VGC. You can find us on TikTok. VGC underscore news um i believe that is all aaron where can we find you you can find me find me on twitter at aaron bain underscore or on the push square youtube channel mm, push square oh. i've heard a lot about these little up-and-comers um <laughs> but you talk a lot about the playstation portable that's that isn't it aye 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 big uh, love, love all that the stuff if you search push square your head that is ps5 psvr2 news and reviews where's playstation vita in that you know, it's it's taking the back step. Once the once the the fake Vita comes out, the portal maybe There's probably maybe more people back. playing the PlayStation Vita now than there are the PSVR two. So I mean, you, almost guaranteed. You, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's a chance. You know, there's still people out there. I, I'm about to do a video actually on the PSVR two soon uh, because uh, things are not not great in my opinion. Anyway, oh really? <laughs> since since when? Since, since launch? Uh, uh, since the second it came out <laughs> yeah, we had that we had that graceful like release window where like there's so many games and then yeah. since they've released exclusively a rubbish on rail shooter and a really bad first person tactical shooter that i say first person <laughs> like they aren't all first person or most of them anyway but uh, yeah it's it's not been something good there's always hope for arizona sunshine comes out later this year i think that could be fun 
not to yeah, turn this into a PSVR 2 segment. Finish the show, Jordan. I'm, I'm just going to keep oh. talking. <laughs> you dig your own grave, boy. Oh, you can follow me on Twitter yeah. at Jordan Midler. Follow Pete at Pete Donaldson. Aaron, you can follow him um, around his house, which um, <laughs> yeah. his address is 121 <laughs> Falkirk Street. I don't actually know what his address is. <laughs> the poor Street. man that lives at 121 Falkirk Street, if that yeah. is such a place. There's going to be more Beth <laughs> Yemen Road. Don't, don't, don't yeah. follow John around his house. He honks. No, <laughs> Just follow the smell wish, if you want yeah. to find yeah. him. Follow, follow smell. <laughs> I wish he'd wash his hand out his <laughs> Say goodbye, Pete. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Say goodbye, Aaron. Goodbye. If you're going to the Scottish Game Awards tonight, you will see me in all my finery. Yay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The Dutch girl picked me. Me, not you. Holland loves Chandler. Thank you, Amsterdam. Good night. <laughs>